Hello, welcome back. Today I'm going to talk all about our block builder patchwork. So we have the box here. They have now headed out to you and hopefully you would have got yours in the post. If you haven't got one and would like to take part then I'll pop a little link below and you can see if we've got any of this month's left. If not you can sign up and make sure you get your hands on one next month. We are also working on getting the pattern as a standalone if you catch this later down the line and there are no boxes left you can still join in the fun. Our block builder series comes in three formats so every month you will get a box created to you and you pick your style of fabric. You can choose Tilda and and this month we had these two beautiful fabrics in the box from the Woodland Collection. You could also choose traditional fabric, designers like Adita Sadar, and we've got these beautiful needleprint fabric and fern fabric from the Seamstress Collection. Or you can go modern bright with designers like Alison Glass, and this month's box had got these two prints in from Alison's Sunglass Collection. Once you've decided on what your style is, every month in your box you will get your chosen fabrics, which will be a surprise each month they'll be different but in keeping within that theme so each month you will also get your pattern so you will see the block made up multiple times on the front of the pattern to show you if you really enjoy making this block you can make a whole quilt from it and as you open the pattern you will see the particular block that we're working on and then there is step-by-step -step instructions all the way through the pattern booklet and then on the reverse we've also given you five different quilt sizes so if you really like this block and want to make a whole quilt out of it we've worked out how much fabric you need for the different quilt options Along with your pattern and in your instructions it's quite a lengthy booklet you can choose to make this block in three formats. You can use standard piecing, most of you will be traditionally wear cutting out the fabrics and sewing them together with your quarter inch seam. You also get the instructions and the templates to foundation paper piece blocks together. In your box you will get all the templates needed to make your block and I'm going to demonstrate how to do this later, don't worry. If you want to make more than one block then I would strongly recommend photocopying these. Again, I'm working on getting a little booklet made with lots of these so stay tuned for that and as soon as that's available I'll pop a link below as well. Not only can you do it regular paper piece and foundation piece, you can also do it English paper piece. You get the templates that you need to create your block. There's two different shapes that we're using this month, a half square triangle and a regular square to make up our block and in each box you you get two sheets of A4 card so that you can trace these templates out and make um, lots of templates to do the English paper piece in. And again, I will demonstrate that for you. Along with your fabric, your instructions and your templates, you also get a colour match thread so you can get sewing straight away. Let's jump on over to the overhead camera and let's get a demonstration on how we're gonna get this block sewn together. Let's take a closer look at the fabrics that were included in this month's box. Here are the two Alice and Glass prints absolutely stunning so beautiful salmon and then a nice pale cream background in the traditional box we've got these two fabrics from Adita Sadar so we've got this beautiful pin print and then the soft ferns in the Tilda box we've got these two prints which is one of their chambres with one of the florals from the Woodland collection so those are your three fabric options. As I mentioned earlier, the instructions are really, really detailed throughout. So it really talks you through every single step on how you get those sewn up in all three methods. And then your templates, as mentioned earlier. So you've got your A template, your B template, your C template, and your D template for your foundation piece. And then you also get your templates ready for your English paper piece in along with some sheets of card so you can trace off those blocks. Within your box you've also got colour match thread to go with your coordinating fabric choice ready to get sewing. Let's have a look first at the regular piece block then we'll make the foundation piece and then we'll move on to the English paper piece in. I'm just cutting out my fabrics now to get the block sewn off and I just thought I would just demonstrate a little bit of cutting because I know that that's quite often an area where some people struggle. I have got my rotating cutting mat out, I've got my trusty Ulfa rotary cutter with a fresh blade on. It's quite often the thing that's overlooked is a nice fresh blade so do make sure you're replacing that blade regularly. It should cut through your fabric like butter. And then I'm using this Ulfa ruler. Now this is a nine and a half inch square ruler specifically bought in to go with our block builder series because all all of the squares are going to be nine and a half inch finished ready to get sewn together into nine inch blocks. What I particularly like about this ruler and why I've selected this one to accompany our block is because of the coating that's on the back. It's got, if you can just hear that, 
it's got this frosted coating on the back which is non-slip and it just grips to the fabric and it does not move giving you really really accurate cuts it's also got nice thin lines so it's much easier to see when you are cutting up when you're lining up and it's got marks down to one eighth of an inch so you can be incredibly accurate also got a really nice diagonal down the center for when you're doing half square triangles all in all really worth investing in one of these rulers if you're going to continue with our block builder series so what i've done is i have got this piece of fabric prepped and um, i'm not going to go into the exact sizes that i'm cutting all of that's included in the pattern and um, so if you want to take part then do click the link below where you can purchase a box all i'm going to do is i'm just going to line up the black line along one of the edges that i have just cut and we're going to cut off the salvage so with a nice sharp blade that just goes through straight away okay and i'm just going to turn this round and i'm just going to find my measurement that i am cutting to place this on and it just really doesn't slip anywhere i can't stress how good these rulers are and then we're going to go straight the way across and then that's your spare fabric we are going to cut these into half square triangles so we're just going to come across we're going to move the point point to point and then we'll just cut straight across and then you've got those so i've got my little piles of fabric here to go with your cutting i do recommend a rotating cutting mat that i'm using here i can't really rotate my much because i've got the legs of the tripod here so that's why i was moving my fabric but if you're new to quilting then you can leave your fabric on the board just rotate the mat round to make sure you're cutting that accurately if you don't want to invest in a rotating cutting mat we do these great little mini cutting mats that are perfect to go by your sewing machine just for squaring up and taking to and from classes and things so yeah they're a really really good little investment add-on you've got inches on one side and then your centimeters in the other okay so i'm going to carry on cutting out and then i'm going to come back to you once I've got all my pieces cut out. So I've got all the pieces cut ready to make our block and I'm using our tilde box. And all I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start off by getting one of these and one of these right sides together. And we're gonna sew down this seam on both pieces. And then we will do exactly the same with the squares. We're gonna go right sides together and sew down one side. Okay, so let's jump over to the sewing machine and let's get them sewn up. Now I've got my machine set to a quarter inch. If you want to, you can pop some pins in just to keep them nice and central. I'm okay, I do a lot of sewing, I don't need to pop any pins in. And I'm just gonna continue to chain piece, so I will just sew them all together. We've got all of those sewn together into one long chain. So all I'm going to do now, I'm just going to grab my scissors and I'm just going to cut those free of the chain. So by chain piecing, it's just a quicker way of getting all your pieces sewn so you're not having to keep stop starting. I'm going to bring in my iron. So I've got a wool pressing mat here. I absolutely love my wool pressing mat. I wouldn't be without it. It's just really good at taking the heat and it's just a really nice portable size to have next to your sewing machine. Now I have also got the Oloso iron. You've all seen these, haven't it? They just lift up and lift down. So what we're going to do now is we're going to press these seams. First of all, we want to set the seam. So we just put a little bit of heat into there. Now it's important when we're doing patchwork blocks, we're not ironing, we're pressing, okay? So we're just gonna press it to one side, put that heat in there. And then I just prop my clapper on the seam, a little bit of press. It just really helps give that really nice set seam. And then we can just pass that block to one side and just repeat that for all of your blocks. Once we've got those, we're going to put our half square triangle pieces to one side. We don't need to worry about those at the moment. And then we're going to get these sewn into our checkerboard with these ones here. Because we've pressed the fabric to the same side on each print, the seams are going to nest. If I bring you up close and you see when I turn that onto the side, you've got one seam going to the left, one seam going to the right. So that when we put these together here, we just get a little tiny bit of resistance in the middle. And that is just enough that we're going to get that perfect point. So if you want to, you can pop a pin in there and then we're going to sew that down on both pieces. Okay, and again, we're just going to set those seams and press them open and we should have perfect points. With all of the patterns in this series, I've designed them with a little bit of wiggle room. So if your cutting isn't quite there yet, you're new to patchwork, you know, you're still perfecting the art of cutting, or maybe you haven't mastered the perfect quarter inch seam yet, 
don't worry everything has been made with a little wiggle room because we're now going to start to square up so again all the measurements are included in your pattern but what we're going to do is we're going to pop the line in the center and then i've got so i've got a cross line down here at two and a half inches and then i'm keeping that cross line coming straight across the center of the block so that i know that i'm going to stay square we'll just repeat that all the way around rotating the mat as we go so we don't have to keep picking that block up so we'll repeat that on the other checkerboard block as well then we have got two perfect blocks ready to get sewn so we'll pop those to one side and we're going to bring back our half square triangle pieces now you've got to decide which fabric's going to go into the center of your block here is the center block so we've got a light fabric and a dark fabric to create this chained look so you've just got to decide decide which fabric's going to go in your center because that's the section that we're going to trim so in the pattern i talk about this being the dark fabric because that's what is what is illustrated i'm going to use the floral for the center of mine so that's the one that i'm going to trim down so just take a little bit of time now and decide how you want your block to look once you've decided how your block's going to look we're going to square this up again measurements are all in the pattern this method of squaring up just gives you that little bit of wiggle room so you've got perfect points because if we square the block up all the way around so if you have a look on this if we were to square the block up all the way around this cross section would be in the middle and then when we sew the block up we will only have a quarter of an inch spare before we hit the point and the way that this has been designed is that that point will just sit a little bit lower we're leaving more fabric to the outside piece so if you look at this example here that is sewn up in the traditional color palette this is the light section that we haven't trimmed yet so as you can see these points here from the dark section are more than a quarter inch in so that when we sew either some sashing or the next block onto these with a quarter inch seam we are not going to come anywhere near the dark fabric so we're going to get perfect points it's these little things that i've built into the pattern that are going to make your patchwork really stand out and give you the results that you really want let's carry on and get this second half square triangle trim and now i want you to place your block out so i'm going to go with the floral fabric into the center and these ones are going to go in there so that is going to be your finished block so first of all we're going to grab these two and we're going to sew this down this seam here and then these ones here we're going to sew down this seam again quarter inch seam We've sewn those and now i'm going to press the seam to the triangles and then take that heat away with the clapper to set that seam stop you getting any ripples and just this process of doing this just really sets that seam so that it's nice and flat for when you start to sew the next seam together now we've got the two sections of our block and we're just going to sew these across here now so we've only got that one point to sew so when we sew these we've got no points to worry about now we're going to sew across here to finish our block we've just got this center point to worry about and because we have consistently pressed the seams to the triangles they get a nest so can you see we've got one seam to the left one seam to the right we're just going to put them together and push opposite and they won't go any further they're perfectly nested we will do that and sew that seam down we're going to open it up heat out of that final seam there is your completed block traditional piece let's move on now and let's make another block this time using the foundation piece method i've got my fabric cut out exactly the same as i did for the for the other block but i've now also got my paper templates here so we've got template a template b template c and template d so we are going to start with template a we are going to have these available to purchase separately very soon so if they are available by the time you're watching this a link will be in the description box below first thing we're going to do is we've got this dotted line around the outside and we just need to cut that out of all of our pieces but all of our templates cut out now we're going to start with template a so what you need to decide is which fabric is going to be your light and which fabric is going to be your dark i'm going to use my floral as my dark fabric and the chambray as my light fabric so that i get that floral in the center of the block much like we did on the last version we're going to turn the, the template over and we're going to get our floral fabric and we're going to put that right in the corner of the template that we've just cut right sides up then we're going to get our chambray now there is no clear right or wrong side to this so it's personal preference we're going to put that right side directly over the piece that we've just placed and then we're going to get a nice flat head pin and we're just going to pin that in place we're going to turn this over and then on the sewing machine we're just going to sew down this line here okay so let's take that over to the machine just sewn down that line so you don't want to go too far past the line either way and then what i've also done is having i've decreased my stitch length down to 1.4 because the idea of that is you're going to create more perforations in the paper so when we tear the template out later it's going to be much easier for you so we can turn this over now take that pin out and then we're just going to give that a press exactly the same way that we would do if we were sewing some regular patchwork 
cloth were on there just to take that heat up. Now Emma is at home today, we're multitasking, so if you can hear a baby in the background, she is here. There we go. So we're going to turn this back over to the right side, so we've sewn A1, A2, now we're going to have a look at A3, so we're going to get this floral here, and the next line we're going to sew down is this long line here. So we're going to turn this over, we want to finish with our piece of fabric that way, so we're going to go right sides together, we're going to line it up with the bottom of our template and the edge of our fabric here. That's just Emma and the ball pit next to me, there we go, so we've just popped a pin in there as well. We're going to turn this over now and we're going to sew straight down this line. So now we've sewn that exactly the same way as before, we will just take the iron and we're just going to give that a little press. So then we now need to sew piece A4, so we know that's going to be a chambray piece, so we'll put this there. We know we want it to finish there, so we're going to flip this over. Again, we are going to line up the edge with the bottom of our fabric and then we're going to match it off with the fabric that we have just placed there. We're going to pop our flat head pin in. Now the importance of the flat head pin is so that it lays nice and flat and doesn't create a bubble when we've got it under the machine and we'll turn it over and we're just going to sew down this long line here. Now we've sewn that seam we're going to take our pin out press that seam as well. Let's take that heat out. Is unit A completed and now we will do exactly the same for unit D. Now we've got units B and C to work on so again we're going to start with B1 so we've got our dark fabric which will go right sides up and then our light fabric which goes right side down. We'll pop the pin there and then we'll do exactly the same with this one and then we're just going to sew down these two lines as before. We'll just press those two seams. Okay, so there we have our units ready to go. Unit A at the top, and then this is unit B. So that one's going to go there, and then we've got unit D. It's going to go there, and unit C go there. But first we need to trim these up. As with the other block, it was wiggle room. Wiggle room in these as well. This is why I recommend you have a second rotary cutter, because we are going to be cutting through paper. I have two of these yellow ones. I really like the handle on them, but we do um, different colour ones if you find that easier. Okay, so paper side up. What we're going to do is we're going to get the quarter inch line. And we're going to place that directly on the solid black line so the quarter inch line directly on the solid black line and then we will just trim that down all the way around so we're just trimming a little bit off if you were to use the same rotary cutter it's just going to blunt your blade a lot quicker your decision your preference i just like to, to keep my blades as long as i can so i do switch between two rotary cutters See, it's marginal bits you're taking off but it is that that little bit of wiggle room i've told you about just makes your patchworking journey much easier if you've just got that little bit of play so let's lay this back out again so unit a perfectly beautiful square unit b unit c and d so what we're going to do now is we're going to get unit a and unit b and we're going to sew these together Together. The way that these have been engineered, so we've got A, B, C and D, what you don't want to do is get these mixed up. You don't want to sew A to C because of the way that the seams are pressed. So on A, we've got the floral fabric, the darker fabric first, and then the chambray over the top so that our seam is going this way. And with this one, we've got it the opposite way so that we've got that seam this side so that when we place those together, very much like we did with the regular piece, we've got the seams, one going left, one going right, so that they are going to nest perfectly there. Now because we've trimmed these a perfect quarter of an inch they should line up when you're going to sew down this black line here it should match that black line there. But if you're not confident with your cutting what you can do is go through the black line on one side and it should pierce the black line on the other side. So you can test that in a few points to make sure you're going to be accurate. But the more that you sew the more you get used to cutting those quarter inch seam the more accurate that's going to become. So we're going to sew down that line there and then we're going to do exactly the same with lock here so we'll put those right sides together nest that seam and sew down a quarter inch there. We're just going to give those a little press and you see that perfect point foundation piecing is just so magical i absolutely adore it and the more that you do of it the more you will adore it too it's just so crisp you don't have to over fuss about your cutting and your seam allowance because it is all done that paper template okay so there we go we have our top and our bottom block so now what we're going to do is we're going to sew down this long edge here so again we're going to nest those seams so if we put these right sides together and if i bring that up close to you can you just to see that we've got one seam going to the left one seam going to the right we're going to nest that together line up and again let's give it a test we're going to put the 
put the pin through the black line and we should come out on the black line on the other side so we know that we've cut those really accurately. And let's get that so let's take that off the machine so you can see the line down one side and then on the reverse as well. So we're going to give that a little press and there is your beautiful completed foundation paper piece block. How lovely does that look? Now, you might be thinking, we've still got paper in that, Sarah. Absolutely do. What I would do is, until you're ready to sew these into blocks, I would keep the paper in there. It really helps to give that patchwork some reinforcement, stops the edges fraying, so it keeps it nice and flat. So really just pop that to one side and that will stay there until you're ready to sew that into a bigger project. When you are ready to get that sewn in, because we reduced that stitch length, we've really perforated the template just gently pulls away very much like a check comes out of a check booth as easy as that so now we're going to move on and we're going to do the english paper piece block so i've got my fabric cut out in exactly the same way i have for the previous two blocks i've got my two sheets of card that came with my book with my box and i've got my template so i'm going to cut out template a and template b along the black line so that there is no black line left showing and then i'm going to come back to you i've got templates a and templates b cut out i've put in the cutting mat and the card and my ruler now you can draw around these and then cut them out with scissors if you prefer i'm going to go straight in and use a rotary cutter I've got my paper rotary cutter that I used for the foundation piece in. Um, again, if you're going to start cutting card with a rotary cutter, it is going to annihilate your blades for going back and cutting fabric. It'll be fine to continue to cut paper and card with, but to then get the crispness to cut fabric, you're really going to struggle. So I'm just going to place my pattern piece on the edge of the fabric where I want it to be. And then I'm just going to move my ruler over, line up the edge, cut that through, and then just double double check that my two pieces are the same size because it's all about the accuracy with English paper piecing, all about the accuracy in the template. So we're going to do that repeatedly. So we want four of the triangle and we want eight of the square. So I'm going to go ahead and get those cut now. Now I've got all of our card templates cut out, our triangles and our squares, and we've got all our fabric. We will start, it doesn't really matter which fabric you start on, we're going to put it wrong side up we're going to get one of our squares and now i use this so easy basting glue you can just use a needle and thread and base this but the glue um is much much quicker and i want to get straight on to making the project rather than the prep work i'm just going to put a little blob of glue straight in the middle and i'm going to place that down and give that a little press in the center of our block now we're going to work on opposite sides so i'm just going to run a blob of glue down the side of the template and i'm just going to press the fabric over there and just hold it for a couple of seconds to adhere that. Now this is a temporary washout glue so don't worry it's non-toxic and then we will do exactly the same on the opposite side so we're creating some tension in the fabric get it nice and taut we don't want it loose so that when we take the templates out the fabric starts to bag just hold that down so we've done the two opposite sides and now we're going to move on and do the two quarter side so exactly the same process do one side first now you've just got to be a little bit careful with these you're just kind of going to tuck them in your fingers can get a little bit stickier here in one corner first hold that give that a little press and then we can move over i'm just going to use a pin just to take it that down so that's just a trick to get a really nice corner there and we'll do exactly the same process here so i've just put the pin in it just helps send that over nice and straight can you see if i was to press that down now you're going to get that bit pointed out by just popping the pin in there and then folding it back and there we go there's our first piece done so we're just going to repeat that same process for the other squares and then i will demonstrate a triangle as well blob of glue right in the middle place that down and then i'm going to start with the long edge nice blob of glue all the way across there hold to the down really nice press now you've not got an opposite edge here to go against so we are just going to go down and you will notice the seams on these are larger than a quarter inch so again as with the other two methods i've built in some wiggle room i just think when you're english paper piece in a quarter inch seam it's just not enough exactly the same we're going to start to press this over we'll do this edge first and then we'll come down to the tricky corner i'm just going to place that in see it from the front really nice crisp corner there so then we're going to put some more glue down this side stop from this edge so we'll just pin in take it over our triangle so we're going to repeat that for the triangles as well that is all of our work pieces put around our template so now i'm going to lay the block out so we're going to have our floral in the centre with our lighter fabric around the outside and then we're going to create this little chain in the centre so about our two square line 
bits. Now I'm gonna get my needle and my thread, put you down a little bit closer, and I've got hold of two of the squares. So I'm gonna first of all show you how to do a whip stitch, and then I'm gonna show you how to do the ladder stitch, which is my preferred way. I've got my um, leather thimble on just to help really get that through. So we're just gonna go through, and we're just catching just a few of the threads. Either side, can you just see that? I'm just gonna do that all the way along. There's Emma. He's having some dinner, so we'll just whip stitch that. It's easier once you get going a little bit, get a bit of speed up. No, she's seen some cows reading a story. Doing that all the way along. I'll join you at the end. So when you get to the end, we're just going to do a couple of over stitches just to secure that thread, and then you can give that a little snip, and we will open that out, and that's our first two pieces sewn together. So that's sewn together with a whip stitch, so you can just see those stitches there. And the aim of the game when you're doing it is to not catch the cardboard, because then once you've finished sewing these all together, we're going to take the cardboard templates out, and we can reuse those for future blocks. So now I'm going to do these two squares here, but I'm going to sew those together using the ladder stitch, which which is my preferred way to put these blocks together. So just create a new length of thread so we've got one long enough. So we'll take these two here, so right sides together as always. Just do a couple of stitches into the seam allowance of one just to secure our thread. And so now, I hope you're close enough, yeah, you can, we're gonna do a ladder stitch. In from the floral, out to the chambray, and then we're gonna go from the chambray back to catch the floral. And then the floral to the chambray, chambray back to floral so you're going back and forth you're creating a ladder effect and this is my preferred way to do it i'm going to do that all the way along make sure you're catching a few threads of both sides without going through that cardboard once you get going with it then you will be flying the first couple of squares or triangles whichever piece you're going to start with always a little bit difficult after you've not done it for a little while but you really fall into the rhythm stitches don't have to be overly close together but close enough you want it to be nice and strong okay so now we are at the end End. we're just going to do another few securing stitches just to prevent that coming undone so we'll just do that in the seam allowance i don't know if you can see the difference it's just a much much smoother finish bring both of them up really close to the camera i just feel that with a ladder stitch you just get a much much nicer finish than you do with a whip stitch so there you go and just work your way through them really really nice and steady so your next thing you're going to do is you're going to put these two together just taking care at that center point and you will just do exactly the same to get your four unit and construct it in the same way that we did with the other two blocks so i'll let you now get all of that sewn together and then i will meet you at the end when we've got our completed blocks i hope you've really enjoyed making your chained blocks with me today they have turned out absolutely stunning wouldn't you agree so on the next slide i will pop pictures of all of the different fabric combinations so that you can see those if you haven't joined us on the block builder series and would like to all the details are below make sure you click on subscribe so you get notified the next time we have a video go live and i will see you next week ready for our crochet block builder. Bye! <laughs> Are you okay beautiful? Hey? Same way. <laughs> Are you okay, Emma? Are you trying to get on mummy's chair? Okay, so once we get to the end, we'll just over sew that a couple of times. <laughs> <laughs> Have fun, Emma.